Good morning. Let us sing hymn number 275. Praise now, creative mind, maker of earth and heaven. Glory and power to him belong. Joy of the sun and skies, strength where the hills arise. So let us praise with joy and song. Hymn number 275. The scriptural will be given by Wendy from Georgia. Good morning. I will read from Proverbs. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. Psalms. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eye hath seen it. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. 
They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is every one that trusteth in them. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let us now sing hymn number 381. What brightness dawned in resurrection and shone in Mary's wondering eyes. Her heart was thrilled with new affection. She saw her Lord in life arise. Hymn number 381. <laughs>
Welcome to the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. This is our Easter Sunday morning service, April 1st, 2018. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And if you missed the one this morning, be sure to get it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. Also on Sundays at 11 o'clock, we have a Sunday school for children, which is conducted by a teleconference number so that any child anywhere in the world can attend. And at all of our services, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. And that includes our Wednesday evening testimony meeting every Wednesday at 8.15 p.m. You can find us not only here in Plainfield, New Jersey, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com, our channel on YouTube, and you can find us on SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our services, either on our website, our YouTube channel, or from your telephone via a teleconference number that we provide. And if you want to know what spring is really all about, there's an article on our website featured on our front page entitled Voices of Spring by Mary Baker Eddy. And let's see, next Saturday morning, uh, we will have another Bible study session. That'll be Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. So check the website for study questions, and please join us next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And we will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science Textbook. And that reading will be given by Jeffrey from New Jersey. A Voice from England. For a number of years, I was a weary woman, not ill enough in health to be called an invalid, but suffering more than could be told with fatigue and weakness. Feeling that this was God's will, I did not ask to be healed, although I was constantly doctoring. I suffered with dyspepsia, congestion of the liver, and many other things, including weak eyesight. With all the medicine and with different changes for rest, I never regained health and thought I never should. So I prayed for grace to bear my cross patiently for others' sake. One day, while lying on my couch exhausted, which had become a frequent experience, the words came to me, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. I rose, knelt down, and said, O oh God, make me well. I was telling a friend this, and she kindly gave me a sentinel. Imagine my joy when I saw the testimonies of healing. I believed them, remembering our Lord's words, blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. I obtained a copy of Science and Health, and before a week had passed, I realized that if God was my all, I needed no glasses. My eyes were healed in a few days, and since then, I have never thought of glasses. I was also cured of dyspepsia, and nothing that I have eaten has hurt me since then. The belief in health laws was next destroyed by knowing that our Heavenly Father did not make them 
And from this has come the beautiful experience of the overcoming of fatigue. For this alone, I can never be thankful enough. True indeed are the words, they shall run and not be weary. This was more than a year ago, and I can say that not once have I felt inclined to lie on the couch, nor have I had a headache, although I am doing more work than ever before. Fear has also been overcome in many ways. A.L. Chelmsford, England. Was it a morning like this when the sun still hid from Jerusalem and Mary rose from her bed to tend the Lord she thought was dead? Was it a morning like this? Lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page two of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. <clears throat> Subject, unreality. The golden text is from Matthew. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. The responsive reading from John. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me 
shall never die. Believest thou this? I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Florence from Georgia will read from the Bible. Isaiah And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. Matthew. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and with those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Luke. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus. Thou, son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, him saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. 
And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. John. Then gathered the chief priest and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. He should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him. Matthew. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. John The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. And as she wept, she stooped down, and looked, into the sepulchre, and see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if you have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Matthew. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. 
And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Carol will now read. I will read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. All reality is in God and His creation, harmonious and eternal. That which He creates is good, and He makes all that is made. Therefore, The only reality of sin, sickness, or death is the awful fact that unrealities seem real to human erring belief until God strips off their disguise. They are not true because they are not of God. We learn in Christian science that all inharmony of mortal mind or body is illusion possessing neither reality nor identity, though seeming to be real and identical. Jesus of Nazareth was the most scientific man that ever trod the globe. He plunged beneath the material surface of things and found the spiritual cause. The Christ was the spirit which Jesus implied in his own statements. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I and my Father are one. Divine truth, life, and love gave Jesus authority over sin, sickness, and death. His mission was to reveal the science of celestial being to prove what God is and what he does for man. Because truth is infinite, error should be known as nothing. Because truth is omnipotent in goodness, error, truth's opposite, has no might. Evil is but the counterpoise of nothingness. The greatest wrong is but a suppositious opposite of the highest right. The confidence inspired by science lies in the fact that truth is real and error is unreal. Error is a coward before truth. What then is the material personality which suffers, sins, and dies. It is not man, the image and likeness of God, but man's counterfeit, the inverted likeness, the unlikeness, called sin, sickness, and death. The unreality of the claim that a mortal is the true image of God is illustrated by the opposite natures of spirit and matter mind, and body, for one is intelligence, while the other is non-intelligence. The material senses originate and support all that is material, untrue, selfish, or debased. They would put soul into soil, life into limbo, and doom all things to decay. We must silence this lie of material sense with the truth of spiritual sense. We must cause the error to cease that brought the belief of sin and death 
and would efface the pure sense of omnipotence. Suffering, sinning, dying beliefs are unreal. When divine science is universally understood, they will have no power over man. For man is immortal and lives by divine authority. Jesus uttered things which had been secret from the foundation of the world, since material knowledge usurped the throne of the creative divine principle, insisted on the might of matter, the force of falsity, the insignificance of spirit, and proclaimed an anthropomorphic God. The understanding of his spiritual individuality makes man more real, more formidable in truth, and enables him to conquer sin, disease, and death. Our Lord and Master presented himself to his disciples after his resurrection from the grave as the self-same Jesus whom they had loved before the tragedy on Calvary. First in the list of Christian duties, he taught his followers the healing power of truth and love. He attached no importance to dead ceremonies. It is the living Christ, the practical truth, which makes Jesus the resurrection and the life to all who follow him indeed. The resurrection of the great demonstrator of God's power was the proof of his final triumph over body and matter and gave full evidence of divine science, evidence so important to mortals. The belief that man has existence or mind separate from God is a dying error. This error Jesus met with divine science and proved its nothingness. Because of the wondrous glory which God bestowed on his anointed, temptation, sin, sickness, and death had no terror for Jesus. Let man think they had killed the body. Afterwards, he would show it to them unchanged. This demonstrates that in Christian science, the true man is governed by God, by good, not evil, and is therefore not a mortal, but an immortal. Jesus had taught his disciples the science of this proof. He was here to enable them to test his still uncomprehended saying, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. They must understand more fully his life principle by casting out error, healing the sick, and raising the dead, even as they did understand it after his bodily departure. Resurrection, spiritualization of thought, a new and higher idea of immortality or spiritual existence, material belief yielding to spiritual understanding. In proportion as matter loses to human sense all entity as man, in that proportion does man become its master. He enters into a diviner sense of the facts and comprehends the theology of Jesus as demonstrated in healing the sick, raising the dead, and walking over the wave. All these deeds manifested Jesus' control over the belief that matter is substance, that it can be the arbiter of life or the constructor of any form of existence. 
whoever reaches the understanding of Christian science in its proper signification, will perform the sudden cures of which it is capable. But this can be done only by taking up the cross and following Christ in the daily life. Become conscious for a single moment that life and intelligence are purely spiritual, never in nor of matter, and the body will then utter no complaints. If suffering from a belief in sickness, you will find yourself suddenly well. Sorrow is turned into joy when the body is controlled by spiritual life, truth, and love. Hence, the hope of the promise Jesus bestows, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, because I go unto my Father. Because the ego is absent from the body and present with truth and love. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 391. Why search the future and the past? Why do ye look with tearful eyes and seek far off for paradise? Before your feet, life's pearl is cast. Hymn number 391.
Let's now sing hymn number 413. Let us sing of Easter gladness that rejoices every day. Sing of hope and faith uplifted. Love has rolled the stone away. Lo, the promise and fulfillment. Lo, the man whom God hath made, seen in glory of an Easter, crowned with light that cannot fade. Hymn number 413. I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, 
for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.